All right, uh, we're ready to get started again. Um, so welcome back. Um, so hopefully uh, you tuned in for the first one, uh, found out that, uh, well, we're just trying something uh, new for the first time and uh, encountering and um, tackling the various issues uh, associated with streaming for the very first time. Hopefully what you'll find is that uh, each one that we do gets just a little bit better and better as we kind of go along, as we kind of work out all the uh, different uh, kind of errors that we're encountering. Today, um, we're going to continue talking about human behavior and what a thing is human behavior. Okay? So last time what we talked about was like, oh, you know what? Human behavior is about this, um, how it changes based on its interactions with its, it, it, with its environment, okay? And um, it's complex because you're looking at the interactions about, oh, the makeup of the individual along with how the environmental circumstances are and how that changes behavior. So it's complicated on that sense. It's simple in terms of the, uh, the um, uh, complexities involving the different um, situations that we're in and our own uh, perceptions of those. Important things to remember when you're talking about behavior change is that every single person is different. Okay, everyone is a unique combination of different strengths and weaknesses, and that in the same exact environment, two different people will react in very different ways. All of us have very different motivations to do things or not to do things. And it's what um, the single environment has that effect on each one of us is that, oh, that same stimuli, that same color, that same smell, that same experience has a vastly different effect based on the individual person that you're talking about. Some people are very motivated to do their best. So what happens for those people, all you need is somebody to say, hey, you did a great job for that person to be very motivated to keep on doing the same thing. Okay? On the exact opposite side, you have people that quite frankly, like, all right, unless I'm in danger of losing my job or in danger of something, then I'm not going to do my best. Okay, so the same environment is going to have very opposite effects depending on the person that you're talking about. One uh, error that most people make when they're talking and um, looking at changing uh, people's behaviors is that we look only at what people tell us and not actually at their actual behaviors, like how they actually do things. Okay, because when you're looking at it, in terms of behavior change, people use talk to cover up a lot of things. Whereas when you take a look at someone's behaviors, they speak a lot more to the motivation behind the things that they do. So you can much more accurately predict a person's behavior and what they're likely to do in any circumstance by looking at their past behaviors. Oh, what did they do previously in exact similar situations? And not look at what people tell you. When you, if you just look at and pay attention to what people tell you, you're gonna be completely misguided in terms of predicting what they're likely to do. The thing is, is that everybody engages in um, things, like they do things, based on their beliefs, right? Based on their perceptions. And it's rare that we actually do things based on the actual reality of the situation. So that's the first thing that we have to understand. Everyone does things based on their beliefs, not based in actuality. We as people are very good about finding evidence that supports our opinion, that supports our perception. And that's what we do generally as people is that when we go through our lives, we find all the evidence that we need to find to support our opinion. And we go and we discredit any information that runs counter to what we believe. So if you're optimistic and you have a good uh, world uh, view, then you will always find examples to support that worldview. If you're pessimistic, 
you can always find evidence that suggests that the world is not a very good place or that um, your situation is going to get worse. How do these beliefs kind of affect our behaviors then? You know, like, oh, we talked about like, oh, how we perceive the world uh, affects the way that we interact with the world. Well, how does that actually happen? Right? Well, let's say that I don't think I'm a very good student. I think I, I'm actually really bad at taking tests. I think I really do horrible on taking tests. And so like I have this belief about myself. And so I have a big test coming up. And I'm like, I already know I'm not going to do well on that test. Like, oh, so then what happens? Like, oh, when we have opportunities to not study for it, we're going to take those opportunities. So like, oh, you know what? I'm not going to do well on this test anyway. So, okay, I'll go out with my friends and we'll go um, hang out or we'll go do something else instead of studying. Oh, I'll uh, like, we find every reason for us because we're not going to do well anyways, not to do that thing. So when I go and do that test and I don't do well, and then when I was like, aha, I, you know what? It's a good thing I went out with my friends because I didn't do well on the test, but I knew then I would have just wasted my time studying for a test. I was going to fail anyways. So we, in that way, we drive our own beliefs. In the same way, when we look for information, when we're looking for information that confirms our beliefs, you know, if I believe a certain something, I'm going to go to websites that generally support my belief. I'm going to look into sources that support my opinion. And I will not visit websites that contradict my opinion. You know, that's how most people go. And so then we find ourselves surrounded by more and more supportive evidence. And we minimize or ignore all the other websites that might contradict the things that we believe. Now, when it comes to um, looking at, well, why do people do certain behaviors, right? Like, well, why do we engage in specific behaviors? What a tendency we have to do, we have is when we look at ourselves, we can provide a ton of different rationale for why we fail to do something or why we did something, you know, and that um, a lot of that is that we understand all the circumstances around us, okay? When we look at other people and why they do certain behaviors, then we're ascribing personality traits to that other person. So we don't look at circumstances. We don't look at all the different uh, facets to what happened with that person that resulted in their behaviors. We ascribe personal characteristics to that individual. Oh, you know what? I didn't finish my work because I had two kids and then oh my God, all these things happened to me today. Like, oh, I was, uh, I had an accident. I, some guy crashed into me. I had this, I had this. And all of these kind of reasons are why I failed to do certain things. However, Dan, Dan over there, well, he's just lazy. When we talk about um, how that perception runs, perception changes based on a, a whole variety of situ situations, right? So um, when we talk about failure specifically, like failure is really defined by the circumstance. And when we take a look at other people, we're like, well, why don't they do this? Or why don't they do that? We don't take into consideration the circumstances surrounding everything. Whereas for us, we take in every consideration about something. Okay, so oh, when we don't live up to stuff, when we're not able to do stuff, for us, we have a litany, a ton of different reasons for why, why, I did, why wasn't I able to do something or why did I even do something? Whereas other people, we don't give them that latitude. We do not give them that, um, uh, the circumstances. And we more often go into ascribing these personality traits to, the, to other people. We all agree then <clears throat> that when we experience failure, let's say that we experience failure at a 30% clip, all right? Like, oh, three out of seven times we fail at something. Can we all agree, oh, that's failure, okay? However, if you're a baseball player, failing seven out of 10 times means you're a Hall of Famer, okay? If you are making contact, hitting the ball at, 
three out of uh, 10 times, you're a Hall of Fame player, okay? So that failure that we kind of like, oh, okay, this is the standard for failure. It's based on perception. It's based on not the event in and of itself, but the circumstances of the event. Along this time, um, there was uh, a belief that someone could not pass a four minute mile, meaning like, oh, when you ran a mile, you couldn't do it under four minutes, right? And that was thought to be impossible to do, right? The one time that somebody broke that barrier, that whole, that entire rest of the year, everybody started to break that barrier, okay? That belief that something was impossible, was able to hold people back until the one person showed them it was possible to do. But then after that, then it got broken consistently right after. All of this have to do with behavior and behavior change. Well, a couple of things here is that failure is what we make it to be. Okay, failure has no meaning in and of itself. It depends on the person looking at that, okay? And on when you're looking at, oh, changing people's behaviors, you have to believe absolutely that there's nothing that is impossible. Because if you believe that it's unlikely, it nearly impossible to do, you're not going to do everything in your power to change that behavior because, well, that's just the way they are. Oh, if I put in this effort, well, what's going to happen? Uh, it's going to fail and I'm, I'm going to waste all my time. Okay. The thing is that anything that's worth changing, it's going to, you're going to experience some level of failure with it. Okay. But the failure teaches you something about the situation for you to grow and get better at. Okay. Now, most of the time, when we go through stuff, we want you to be a good teacher. And a good teacher is about teaching without limitations, without going in and saying, you know what? I already think the student is not going to be able to do something. So instead of teaching something, I'm not going to even bother teaching that thing. Because why? Why? Because they're not going to learn it anyway. For us to be successful, then, we have to be very, very good about accessing somebody's motivation to do stuff and which means that we have to look at how they're perceiving things in what way are they needing to be motivated and we can't take a look just at what people tell us because people tell us a lot of things that are not necessarily true they and they're not lying they're just giving you their experience of stuff but the thing is their experience is their talk and their talk a lot of times is not actually connected to the things that they actually do. Based on all the things that I've said so far, then it would be like, well, then it becomes completely uh, impossible to predict what people do, you know, because if everybody's individual and everybody has their own strengths and weaknesses and like, well, how can we possibly narrow it down? Well, the thing is, is that people are predictable based on their patterns of behavior, okay? We dress the way that we do. We um, talk the way that we do. We interact with the world in the way that we do, okay? Based on patterns, okay? And what we can deduce from looking at patterns of these kind of behaviors is a rough idea of what you're likely to do in the future based on what you've done in the past. The best poker players in the world, they play each other. They don't play the cards, right? The best poker players are looking at specific behaviors that you're doing that would give them some insight into what cards you're holding, all right? And so what they're not looking at is the things that you're talking about. Maybe they're looking at, oh, when they talk about this subject area or their rate of speech gets this level, it tells them, oh, they probably have a good hand versus, oh, they talk in this way as opposed to the things that you're telling them. All that con people for a living that try to swindle money, okay? They don't go into a room 
and like, oh, I'm just going to randomly select people to con. What they're doing is they're going into a room and they're looking at body language. They're looking at dress. They're looking at all of these different factors. And all of those different factors speak to, oh, the likelihood of you believing something or not believing something. And they're choosing the biggest sucker in the room based on the body language and everything else that we do. The thing is, is that when we take a look at someone's behaviors and we take a look at what people are actually doing, then we can be reasonably accurate in our predictions of what they're likely to do next or under specific circumstances. Biggest thing then to take away from this talk is then, hey, when we're taking a look at people, look at their behaviors. And when you're looking at changing someone's behaviors, you don't look at what they tell you. You don't look at what they say to you. You're looking at specifically the things that they're doing. And that gives you a lot more insight into what motivating factors are involved so that then you can arrange the environment in a sufficient enough way to produce the behavior changes that you're looking for. All right, uh, I think uh, it's uh, time for us to wrap up uh, our, uh, our stream here. Uh, so I really, really appreciate uh, everyone taking time out of the day to watch us. Um, uh, by all means, if there's things that we can do better, uh, like I said, we're here to uh, help as many people as possible. And, um, you know, this is a new medium for us. So give us a little bit of latitude as we kind of grow into this medium and learn how to uh, best facilitate it. Um, and uh, if you like this, please um, subscribe. Uh, if you like this podcast, please hit like. Uh, and we would appreciate any feedback that you have to give.